As the world figures out that Bitcoin is both in perpetual crisis and also indomitably strong, the Federal Reserve has just received a requested report which proposes that the United States Federal Reserve issue its own cryptocurrency for a faster payment network than existing dollars. While leaders in countries like the United Kingdom, Russia, and China have already indicated their interest in issuing their own national cryptocurrencies, and while there have been rumblings of a Fed coin for a long time, this seems to be the first proposal that delivers this idea directly by the request of the United States Federal Reserve itself. So what does this national digital currency platform mean for your family's future? What does this mean for your Bitcoin? And why are you one of the lucky ones who may get to have it all? Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together, welcome to Minting Coins. So, uh, I think everyone is still a little bit drunk on all the excitement of the BIP91 getting activated yesterday, and there's also a lot of excitement uh, still going on and a lot of confusion about what's going on uh, with the BIP91 activation for uh, SegWit. And so, uh, you know, I guess mainly over the past three days, Bitcoin has increased its value over 60%. Um, people are trying to figure out where is it going from here, and they're trying to figure out what's the next step in terms of the SegWit total activation. So, quick update with that. So, while we have the SegWit activation um, uh, through BIP91, uh, BIP91 is what's activated. The BIP91 is lowering the threshold from the 95% of which it was uh, before originally from a, a year ago when we had, a, I think, the BIP141, and it's lowered it, lowered it to 80%. And so what we have is that uh, the threshold now for the miners to activate SegWit is 80% instead of 95%, and this date is still coming up in uh, just a just a few days, just about eight or nine days away from now. And so, with that, uh, what is we're looking to happen is that we're looking for the miners to continue signaling for SegWit, and now instead of needing a super majority of 95% of all the miners to uh, signal for SegWit, now we only need 80% of all the miners to signal. So now the, the band of bandits who can be anti-Segwit can be as much as 20% of the total network who can uh, veer against uh, you know, Bitcoin having Segwit activated. And what's gonna happen is that with 80% of the network uh, signaling for setwork, uh, Segwit, perhaps more than 80%, 85 plus percent signaling for Segwit, if uh, the non-segwit side of the chain was to solve a block, uh, that solving of the block would be out of sync with the uh, with the main chain, which would still have the majority. And so uh, the the non um, the smaller you know uh, mining powered uh, non-segwit Bitcoin, they wouldn't get rewarded with what you know would be presumably be the the actual Bitcoin, the real Bitcoin, the Bitcoin that has the majority of the hash power behind it. Um, so we still have a little bit of a ways to go because we still need August 1st to roll around. We still need uh, SegWit uh, to get fully activated um, and to just not see any divergences in that situation, in that system. Uh, and so we'll take maybe a, a quick peek at just a little bit more about all that. But really, the, the major news the, the, that I think is really coming out sort of quietly in the midst of all of this Bitcoin FUD and this Bitcoin confusion uh, is this information that's coming from, you know, not just from the Federal Reserve, but really information going to the Federal Reserve, where the Federal Reserve is receiving all these different proposals about how they can make payment networks faster. And so this is a major problem for existing 
financial institutions, it's, it takes a long time to verify bank wires or bank transactions, especially uh, overseas, um, across different banks, across different people, making sure that uh, AML and KYC laws are followed and, uh, and still having really fast or faster payment transaction times. And so some of the proposals that the Federal Reserve uh, has received and the requests of how they can make uh, these uh, payment networks faster, some of these proposals have included information about blockchain and blockchain technologies and how blockchain technologies can make this happen. It's really, really exciting. It's really, really scary. It's really, really interesting to see what's happening, to see what's going on. And uh, I wanna thank you for showing up and looking at this information with me. So why don't we look at the market and uh, after we look at the market, I think we can pop into some of the news and Let's discuss. So looking over at the total market capitalizations from coinmarketcap.com, we see uh, Bitcoin is down 1% in the past 24 hours. So it did this uh, nice bump up on the activation of BIP91 just because now people in the market realize that we're even closer to having a resolution. We're even closer to having SegWit activated, which is just going to provide uh, a ton of benefits for the Bitcoin network and, and everyone across the world. Uh, but it's not, um, <clears throat> you know, SegWit is not activated yet. And so it's really interesting to think that in nine days, if, you know, there's a high chance that SegWit does get activated. So if nine days that, you know, SegWit is activated, let's presume, uh, we could see an exponential rise of the Bitcoin price shoot up to, you know, easily around thirty-four, thirty-five um, hundred dollars, four thousand uh, dollars. You know, it, it could definitely peak uh, past that four thousand dollar mark on the resolution of Segway and us having uh, a Bitcoin that has all of these fixes that Segway is going to provide. So it's really, really exciting to see what's happening and what's going on over there. Um, it's it's good to see uh, a really strong Litecoin uh, price. Uh, it's really interesting to see what's happening with Ethereum with all of their bad news. Um, I think uh, I know I'm very long on Ethereum. I think Ethereum is very strong. Uh, I'm you know very supportive of what's happening in terms of creating an Internet 3.0 and creating this new decentralized Internet where each of our computers are just one transistor on this globally distributed supercomputer um, and all the possibility that's going to create in terms of efficiency and quality and privacy and interconnected messages and information, not just payment systems and payment networks, although that's going to be a very important layer of the Ethereum network. Uh, especially with all the transactions and having things run really efficiently. But that's really the beauty of the system is everything working on uh, an equal playing field, everyone working on an equal uh, you know, set of rules in order to create and use and share ideas and technology. Uh, we're, you know, internet of today and games of today, we have God mode and we have people able to hack the iPhone games and hack computer games and, you know, just take total advantage of the systems. And why are they able to take advantage of those systems? They're able to do that because the systems are centralized. The same reason the hackers are able to, you know, steal millions and millions of credit cards at the same time is because those systems are centralized. And so when we have the banking systems decentralized like Bitcoin, it just creates a lot more security. And when we have the computer systems decentralized uh, like Ethereum, it creates a lot more security, uh, a lot more fairness, a lot more equality. Uh, we really get that perfect distribution of the, the, the averages. Um, allowing you know what I think is going to be a lot of creation, a lot of innovation, and uh, a lot of expansion of each of these technologies. But with that being said, <clears throat> um, I, uh, let, let's see, what did I want to do? Um, I guess I wanted to show you this, uh, this keep signaling video. So get the, get the message out there. Uh, I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to 
tell you how it's going to begin. A world without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. So, uh, you know, I just thought that that was like a sort of really powerful message to all the miners and all the people and everyone out there is that the signaling process still has to happen. The signaling process still needs to continue and still needs to confirm and still needs to activate. And uh, we are one huge step closer. I mean, the activation of BIP 91 and, and SegWit with BIP 91 is a, is a huge step, uh, but we're not out of the woods yet, so to speak. Um, with that, we also see, uh, you know, there's this article from Bitcoinist that just mentions that the 13 Japanese exchanges are going to temporarily halt the uh, Bitcoin transactions on August 1st. And this is just another sign, another indication of uh, what's going to be going on and how there's gonna, just going to be a lot of um, um, uncertainty until we really get through this. And when we really get through this, is really going to be, you know, I think there's going to be a lot more clarity. Um, you know, every week there's just going to be progressing levels of clarity. And so just stay tuned, stay paying attention because it's really giving you an upper edge and a higher level of advantage uh, just to understand where are we really in this process and not you know believing any one news source uh, because of either misinformation or um, you know maybe hidden agendas and and just for clarity that also includes any information that you get from this you know channel just because it's it's possible that people can feed anyone misinformation so I do my best and we do our best to do all of our due diligence to look up information and verify information and I think you see that when you watch the videos but uh, it's it just you know it's just a, a, a suggestion and a recommendation of best practice to always verify yourself as well so turning to today's main news really the main information that I wanted to share with you guys is uh, this uh, article that came out of Coindesk.com that's talking about uh, how different startups are pitching the Federal Reserve for creating faster payment systems using cryptocurrency. And so uh, there's a specialized task force which is called, called the Faster Payments Task Force which has been set up directly by the United States Federal Reserve. and uh, this task force has received in total 16 different proposals from various uh, companies and providers who are going to be, be able to help with this initiative of creating faster payment systems. And so out of these 16 different proposals that the Federal Reserve has received, five of these submissions incorporated some sort of form of blockchain technology um, using blockchain technology directly and or distributed ledger technology in order to accomplish the goal requested, which was uh, creating a system for faster payments for the United States dollar and the United States Federal Reserve system. So these, uh, some of these companies included Echo, Hub Culture, uh, uh, Clapton Group, Nano Pay Corporation, Ripple, Thought Matrix Consulting, and Zaggle Rhythms. Um, and the most notably of which that this article is based around is Wing Cash. Uh, way to make a, a name for yourself and just really standing out from the crowd. Um, and so Wings Ca Wing Cash's proposal goes as far uh, as to uh, propose that the Federal Reserve create, initiate, distribute their own cryptocurrency. And so this proposal goes on to state, uh, I'll read this quote here, that uh, you know, with the WinCash Faster Payment Network, it's a software platform that would be owned and operated by the Federal Reserve and the governing organization, presumably WinCash. The Federal Reserve would issue digital currency, presumably digital Fed notes, 
um, and it is tied to the internet domain. So these digital Fed notes would exist on and with the internet and the, the world of the internet. And so a digital Fed note sure sounds a lot like a Fed coin to me. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't think you could say uh, digital Fed note any more concisely um, other than Fed coin. I mean, Fed coin, Fed notes. Uh, maybe maybe they want to have their own take on it. Maybe these are going to be called Fed notes uh, and not Fed coin, right? Uh, very very interesting the the semantics of how this goes on. And so you know, as we were talking about earlier. Um, other countries have talked about this, countries in the UK, uh, Russia, uh, you know, leaders in Russia and the banking system, politicians. I believe Putin has, Putin has mentioned it uh, once or twice as well. Um, China has talked about creating a national cryptocurrency. And could you imagine that? These countries will have insight on every single penny that, that you spend everywhere. Um, to a greater degree of which they know where you spend your debit card transactions, and, you know, because it'd be a direct link to that knowledge and that information, and also really eliminating the need for actual physical dollars uh, in in the country. Let it be the UK, Russia, China, or the United States itself. So it's really interesting. This is the first time that um, this has been proposed. Um, to the Federal Reserve and it's by request of the Federal Reserve so it's it's interesting how these things could work sometimes because the Federal Reserve you know benignly just sent this request out the or you know I guess at first they created this task force and this task force is the uh, the faster payment uh, faster payments task force and they requested these proposals and um, you know out of these 16 proposals some of them were about cryptocurrency to create the, the feel and the landscape of how it could relate in different ways to the Federal Reserve System. And one of them really goes for that money shot and, um, you know, directly for the money, the, the, the literal, literal money of the, of the fiat money at least, and uh, propose the idea that everyone has been talking about for a long time. It's really, really interesting to think that, you know, that they requested these proposals, they received these proposals, and now, you know, they benignly have this actual Fed coin, Fed note, federal cryptocurrency proposal in front of them in their hands. Um, and what are they going to do with it? Where are they going to go with it? You know, none of this is an endorsement from everybody uh, or anybody. All we know is that they receive this information. And uh, with this information, you know, the Wingcash um, uh, short URL for their website redirects from FedNotes. So I guess that's good marketing on their part is that they already purchased FedNotes.com. And uh, when you go to FedNotes.com, um, that redirects us to the Wingcash website, which is the FasterPaymentsNetwork.com. Uh, again, really good marketing having, you know, buying the domain name of which is the uh, slogan that you're using. And uh, yeah, all sorts of information here. We'll include this link in the show notes below, and then we'll also include the actual report that the uh, that the task force, um, I suppose, has received. The Faster Payments Task Force final report, part two, a call to action, July 2017. And so. Um, all of this is, uh, all of these are different links that uh, I'll include in the show notes below. Uh, you guys can take a look at these as we were talking about before, clicking on these links and really looking at what's there, searching what's there, reading what's there, and uh, really taking your knowledge to the next level. Um, so you could really understand uh, deeper down what's going on uh, beyond you know the headlines that you're seeing on Twitter and just these 140 character sound bites um, that you might get on um, you know some you know different news sources or maybe clips on articles um, you know and just it's really great when we bring it all together and uh, get a fuller clearer picture of how we're relating and how our Bitcoin is relating to what's happening in the news and what's happening in the country. And you are just really, really lucky and you are just really, really fortunate that you are even here and having this conversation and are a part of this conversation and are learning about this and are on this ride and this journey. 
even if you don't know anything, the sheer fact that you're asking questions is putting you ahead of the game. Now, I hope that you are coming to some conclusions and um, are really looking at your options and are participating in the revolution and the possibility and the opportunity of what is possible and what is uh, the potential and what is the promise of this uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer technology, this decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cash, because, you know, is it an if or is it a when the Fed notes or the, or the Fed coin uh, manifests across the United States and across the world and they, you know, I suppose they're going to try to create a, uh, f uh, instead of a petrol dollar, it'd be a petrol Fed note. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, Bitcoin will still exist. You know, these Fed coins would then materialize. Bitcoin would still exist. Um, you know, Bitcoin exists on the layer of the Internet and on the Internet. Um, it's a network, you know, on software that uh, is connected to the Internet. And so with this Fed coin, and so I'm sure there'd be great interactions. And ultimately, when there's trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars exiting all the fiat currencies and uh, sources of uh, places to put your money from all around the world and are entering different cryptocurrencies, and the US and Russia and China and uh, the UK and all these different countries have their own you know, cryptocurrencies, and maybe some of these smaller countries will use the Fed note cryptocurrency there's still going to be trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars from people who are not going to trust china coin they're not going to trust uk coin they're not going to trust russia coin and there's you know a small chance that they're not necessarily going to trust the fed coin or the fed note as well and so where's that money going to go where's that trillions and trillions of fiat capital going to go it's likely going to go into bitcoin as well as Dash and Litecoin and Monero uh, and Ethereum, of course, and Ethereum Classic is going to get that love. The whole sea is going to rise to some degree. But at the beginning of the day, not even at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day, Bitcoin is the biggest. Bitcoin is the first. Bitcoin is the globally recognized, world reserve, decentralized cryptocurrency that's just borderless and uh, friendly for everyone, especially when we reach the full activation of SegWit. And so while there's all these trillions and trillions of dollars of fiat all around the world, hundreds and hundreds of trillions of dollars of fiat all around the world, there's only 21 million Bitcoins that are ever gonna be created. And there's only about, you know, 16.4 million Bitcoins that exist right now. So, you know, I, I think there's about 150 million people in Russia and maybe 350 million people in America and you know, one point something billion people in China with 7.5 billion people across the world. If you own a fraction of a Bitcoin and if some of these things start to happen where the countries go to the fiat currencies and then these currencies are, uh, you know, interplaying between the uh, new crypto fiat and the uh, and the actual blockchain cryptocurrencies that are truly decentralized, you know, it's just a huge potential uh, to be a part of this at the ground level, especially when this hasn't even blown up yet. You know, we're we're starting to see these indications on Fox News with these reports and CNBC, but it's you know it's not on CNN yet, and it's not on your local news yet. So uh, it's not on the front page of the local paper yet, and so uh, we're definitely not to the point of the mass explosion, and you know. Just be prepared for the bumpy ride because this is a, a roller coaster. The market's going to continue to go up and it's going to continue to go down in order to take advantage of the people who are just not aware that the market goes up and down. They're not aware that the, the goal is for other people to take as much as they can, understanding that the value of the Bitcoin is likely going to increase exponentially as we move forward over the next uh, three years as we move forward into 2020 and into September of 2020 and into January of 2021 and then you know I, I, I can't even I don't want to start thinking about 2025 yet and where we're gonna be with the Bitcoin and you know how we're gonna be so far past the moon 
um, we're, we're not going to recognize the, the little blue dot of Earth anymore. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to know what you think. Am, am I far off? Do you think that the price of Bitcoin is going to drop? Do you think that there is a conspiracy for the market to uh, get people to sell high or, or sell low and, and buy high in order to take advantage of people in the market? Um, you know, what do you think about this Fed coin or Fed note? Which word do you like better, Fed coin or do you like Fed note? Uh, because it's going to be really interesting to see how the, the marketing of that plays out and what people's response to it is, especially people who are totally unaware. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to keep this conversation going and just think about this a little bit more because this is going to be a crazy ride and this is just the first step of. Uh, of possibility because this is no longer someone's imagination of things that could happen this is another first step of what is actually happening right in front of our eyes so with that being said tap that like button if you haven't already and uh, uh, subscribe if you are a, a new viewer to the channel and uh, share your thoughts in the comments below uh, we'll talk again in the next video, have some exciting videos that we are making for you. And until then, I'm glad that together we're minting coins.